Hello, I'm Gab and welcome to this solo hosted Slow Mo Guys video. This video is sponsored by LG and to help us make it, they've kindly provided this colossal television which is currently displaying the live feed of a phantom camera sat right over there. So why don't we take a look at the setup. There is a set of stills photos online by a German photographer called Marcus Rugels, I think is how you pronounce his name, who's done a bunch of droplet photography. So as the droplet falls into the water and then rises back up and separates from its column, he'll take a picture and it will refract an image through the droplet behind. So he's done the Earth and other planets and uh, we're going to basically replicate that but have a video element so you can actually see it in motion and hopefully see the separation of the droplet and it will just look like the planet Earth. There's a little globe in a tiny droplet of water. Now in order to make this work, we need to flip the world upside down and that is because the droplet of water will be flipping the image. So all of the information down here will be seen in the top of the droplet and all the information from up here will be seen in the bottom. Kind of like how your eyeballs work. Now I didn't actually have a big map of the earth like this so I printed one out on like 15 pieces of paper, cut them out and stuck them to this board. It looks pretty terrible but hopefully because it will all be seen through a droplet about here you won't be able to notice how shoddy my map is. We'll start at 12 and a half thousand frames a second on the V2640, which means we need a lot of light. Let me stop you down there. And uh, this could take many, many attempts. Because this is such a fiddly shot and this camera is very loud to stand next to, I'm going to play it back on the 8K OLED. While we watch these back, I'm going to turn off the on-screen display so we don't have anything fixed. So this time I focused on the droplet itself. Yeah, and it does seem like the map is too far away from the droplet to be in focus at the same time. So I'm gonna to have to figure out a way to add some depth here. Oh, I do love how at 12,000 frames, the separation here should be really, really nice. What do you think, Smee? Oh yeah, do you like that? That was cool, wasn't it? What do you think of the droplet? What do you think of the droplet? It's good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So this is the opposite. The map is in focus, but the actual definition of the droplet is very blurry. That one went a little bit too high, just out of frame. So I'm just going to tilt up try again. So I've stopped the lens down here, that's why it's a lot darker, but it has brought this map slightly more in focus. I think I'm going to have to stop the lens down even further to get that sharp looking, which will make it even darker. But this is currently at 12,000 frames a second, and I think it might be slower than we need. God, I love the way it, I love the way it stacks them like that. So we could probably get away with dropping it to 6,000 frames a second and stopping the lens down even more. Reset the old syringe here. So this is 6,000 frames a second. So we've gained an entire stop of light and I've been able to add a little bit more depth. It's still dark, so I'm gonna add another light, but this is just testing it. Yeah, so now the actual droplet itself is showing sharpness as well as the map. Getting there. I want to get just a bit more light now, so I'm going to turn on this very bright torch, which may result in an extremely bright Africa. Now, to my eye at the time, this one made the map look the sharpest I've seen. Definitely at the cost of the sharpness of the droplet, though. Wow. You can actually see how bad my map is in this one. <laughs> you can see that line. At the cost of even more speed, I think I've got the map and the droplet as sharp as I want them at the same time. We're only at 3,000 frames a second though, so it is a little bit briefer. Oh, it's still long enough to see it. Oh, I'm liking this. I really enjoy videos like this, just experimental ones where you can just change one variable each time. 
Currently, the only light is on the map, and I'm wondering whether to get this to appear a little bit more spherical and 3D, I should actually shine some light to give little highlights on the edges of the droplet. So maybe hitting the droplet with some light at some point might be worth doing. So now I've taken the light that was blasting the top of Africa and I've shined it directly on the droplet. So we now have these glistening parts. It looks more like a marble. Wow. I'm not sure if that's what we want, but it's definitely a different look. Not a huge fan of all these glares it's putting in. I think for the next shot, I'm gonna get off this macro lens and uh, just pull back slightly, maybe get a shot of the glass, a bit of a wider shot and the map a little bit more in focus. So this will now allow me just to be a little bit further back, see the whole fall of the droplet, see the crown, see the column, the separation of the droplet, and also the entire glass and the map at the same time. It's a lot easier when it's not macro. Back at 12,000 frames. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like 12,000 is actually pretty perfect for this. It's incredibly leisurely, like it's not too slow, but you really do see everything that's happening there. And this shot has a lot more context than the super duper macro stuff. So far there's still, in every shot there's been sort of like a black border around the whole thing. And I think that's mainly because my light is so close to the map, it's leaving very dark areas, which I kind of need the light to be that close, otherwise it's not intense enough. It's actually a glaring error in this shot. The light that's lighting me over there is not a high speed light, it's too low power, so it's flickering because of the AC current. And you can see it in the reflection there. That is uh, that's high speed 101, really. I balls it up. <laughs> Next up, I'm gonna take this lens off and the mount off as well, so it accepts a PL lens, one of these cinema lenses. This is a 200 mil, so I'm gonna put this on, move the camera really far back to its minimum focus, and what that should do is bring the background and the droplet closer together in the shot. Perfect. Oh. <laughs> Never in my life had a monitor this big. <laughs> Just gonna top up the water a little bit. <laughs> I can see, I can see stuff floating in it. <laughs> So now I'd love to tell you a little bit about this TV. This is the world's first LG Signature 8K OLED TV. It's 88 inches diagonally, which that's bigger than my wingspan. I don't think you'll ever get old that they used a screenshot from one of our videos as the YouTube sign-in page on Android TVs. <laughs> I literally just pressed YouTube and that popped up. <laughs> to put the resolution of 8K into perspective, if this was an HD TV, it would be 1920 by 1080 pixels, which is about two megapixels. And if it was UHD, it would be 3840 by 2160, which is about eight megapixels. This TV is 7680 by 4320, which is about 33 megapixels. Every frame is 33 megapixels. Just for a laugh, I've connected a PC to it and I've set the resolution to 7680 by 
4320 and it currently has scaling of 300% which makes everything look normal sized. I'm just going to set it to 100% because then everything will be pixel for pixel at 8K resolution which, well that should be comical to be honest. <laughs> See how big the start menu is. <laughs> so small. You could honestly sit here like this and do, do some work. Now you might be wondering, what can I watch in 8K on a screen like this? Well, let me show you. We've actually been shooting a lot of our videos in 8K for quite some time. So you can watch our videos if you want. This one's available in 4320p 50. See how it looks. If my GPU doesn't explode. Oh, I can see the bald spot on the top of my head. That's the downside of 8K, I guess. In the last TV video, I was showing how an LCD panel looked different to an OLED panel under a macro lens. This is what the 77 inch 4K OLED looked like under five times magnification through the macro lens. And just to show the increased pixel density, this is the 8K 88 inch OLED under five times magnification. And that just about does it. Hopefully you enjoyed that footage. Big old thanks to LG for sponsoring this video. And do make sure you subscribe to the Slimer guys. We have a second channel too. I recommend it.